Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Line Change, the NHL betting podcast from the Action Network. My name is Michael Leboff, and in just a moment, you'll also be hearing from my co-hosts and friends, Nick Martin and Tim Kalinowski, as the three of us break down Wednesday night's four-game slate uh, of NHL action. Normally, when we have more robust uh, nights of hockey to handicap, we'll give out an underdog uh, at the top of the show and a best bet at the end, but with only four games, we're just going to quickly go game by game here. We'll start with the Flyers and Sabres in a true pick em in Philadelphia. Minus 110 on either side here, Nick, and an over-under of seven. Yeah, it should be a pretty fun contest. I uh, would actually say I lean towards the Flyers here. They're still playing pretty respectably. Kind of just the Ducks game really is, is the one that was one you'd want to throw out. But they are playing... Really strong, just gritty hockey, torts hockey. They're deeper than a lot of people thought they would be. And they're kind of catching Buffalo in a decent spot here, I think. So I wouldn't say I have a play. I think Buffalo maybe becomes trendy, so I'd just kind of recommend being careful there. But yeah, I I didn't really see much value with either side on this one. Yeah, I think that you're right. And first of all, the the Flyers were plus money uh, when this line first opened. So the market agrees with you and the Sabres look, it's it's not a must win game by any stretch on November 1st, but you'd have to say the stakes are pretty high for the Sabres in this home and home with the Flyers four and five. So much pressure on them to make good on some preseason hype. The team has started slowly uh, and sunk some seasons getting off the bad starts with this core. So you, you would have to imagine there's, there's some pressure here on Buffalo to, to have a good home and home with Philadelphia. I'm with you. I would lean towards Philly, uh, even at this price with the Flyers at minus 110. But uh, ultimately, uh, a pass here for me. Tim? Yeah, usually with a um, home-and-home situation, you would want to just play the money line dog twice, and uh, hopefully you just go you know, one and one, and you know, then you, you win some money. But uh Buffalo wins every game. I don't think they're going to win and loses every game. I think they should win. So that makes them a really tough handicap at this point. I think that um, I would have liked to bite on Philly at a um, a better price because I just think that after losing two in a row, what is it, uh, four or five, that they're going to have to get a good effort um, from Torts here. Torts is going to have those guys flying around. But I don't know. I think, I think the line just it's pretty much spot on. I, let's – uh, Nick, we'll be looking at some uh, some shots in this game as it expected to be, uh, as it is expected to be high scoring. So um, I know you'll be looking there, right? Yeah, and I I think that's a reasonable point. And just one more note, I'd add like basically the way Phillies looked, like it's pretty reasonable to think this should be fifty fifty gameplay, and then it's UPL versus Carter Hart. So yeah. I don't know that I think that makes the case for the Flyers. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there too. Um, my guy has been, uh, my guy's been Atkinson lately for, uh, Philly. I, for some reason, I just always, I just always think this guy, you know, like, <laughs> I, I, I feel I like he, he, he shoots it till his arms fall off. To, What's to that? Just, I actually think they're overusing Atkinson. Like he's getting the <laughs> points, but I'd actually, if I were a Flyers guy, I'd be like, there's some other people you could probably play those minutes too, but, um, it's, it's towards his guy. Know, it's towards his guy. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Morgan Frost is not towards this guy, but no. probably should be. Maybe toward, maybe Frost for Oliver Wallstrom struck that trade. Uh, on to the second game of the night. The Calgary Flames will try to stop the bleeding as a plus 115 underdog at home. Stars are minus 135 as a road favorite, and the over-under is six. I would lean towards Dallas here, but uh, I think the more interesting prop that sportsbooks can offer here would be a yes, no on will a jersey hit the ice in Calgary on Wednesday night? The the Canadian form of of protestation. I, 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 whoever lost that Heritage Classic between Edmonton and uh, and Calgary, the next game you were going to see a jersey on the ice if it was a dud. I, this, the, the Stars are just a terrible team to run into uh, in this kind of spot. We'll see how they divvy up the goaltending because they are doing the Alberta two step with the Oilers on Thursday night. I think that that is why I'm ultimately going to lay off here. I, like I said, I would lean towards Dallas, but I think you're going to catch a pretty good number on Dallas against Edmonton. Uh, Cause a lot of people are pretty hyped up about the Oilers after they're on their one game winning streak 
uh, off of the Heritage Classic, Tim. Yeah, I've. It's so hard. This is like kind of a a similar. I don't know how you guys like to handicap situations like this in terms of. We think the Stars are the better team. We know they're the better team, but like the Flames, they they have to turn it around at one point. Right? They have to get back to some level of of competency at some point. So that kind of scares me off. I'm going to the uh, excuse me off sides here. I'm going to the under under six. Um, I hope it's still six by the time this comes out. But um, two teams that you know not they're kind of middle of the road in in sh- in shots and shots allowed so i just think it's kind of like a low variance like not really eventful type game and maybe overtime too uh yeah i think that's probably a good shout jacob markstrom's probably been calgary's best player for the season and and his surface level numbers aren't all that great uh, and that tells you just what calgary's at the one concern about handicapping the situational spot with the flames is they were in the situation 20 times last season and <laughs> Nick and I would be sitting here and being like, oh, this has got to be the one. This has got to be the one from Calgary. And then they just took our money. Yeah. Yeah. That I, I think it's just a pass because I hate the spot, but I'm never betting the flames here. Like we've talked about how they're still getting so much market respect. And I just keep looking at the same point, which is that if Kadri and Huberto are terrible, which they're terrible right now, how do they get this market respect? Like they have no one who's going to score. If you look at them compared to like an Anaheim right now with how those guys are going, like you could, they have a deeper forward core, but they don't have any stars moving the needle in the right direction. So the spot's a little scary because this is an all out, like they've been humiliated three times in a row, but that's not enough to make me think you can bet them here. I just, I don't love it either way. I haven't thought Dallas has been entirely convincing either in the early going. They're they're not looking like world beaters at all. I still think they'll be really good, but just looks like a pass to me. They, I, they beat up on bad teams. I, I still yeah, like question their ability to score. Like, and they beat they're up like on another bad one teams. of these ones that just looks like right in the pack. And I'm like, I'm not excited to bet on them right now at all. And it it just you look at the way the, the games have gone for Calgary so far. I, I think they're getting too much market respect based off like the way the roster is actually looking, but I, I just hate the spot for Dallas. So I can see it both ways. I think like people are going to be absolutely smashing Dallas. I think it's going to be like the, the obvious way to look at this game, just looking at the records and kind of the way most people view the stars. Stars are five one on one. Calgary's scuffling bad. So yeah, that's it makes me like the Oilers more because if, if the Flames I'm sorry, the game against the Oilers more because if the Flames do get this win. But I'm not that high in Dallas. Like I was yeah, actually, I just I, I, I think it's more about of... I think that number on the Oilers is just gonna But the one thing on the Oilers too that we'll probably talk Thursday is like they actually haven't defended that bad. No, like, they played like really their underlying really numbers are good. Games. It's just the goal yeah, yeah exactly. I just so if, I think if, if you get Skinner and Right he's gonna like keep the... playing good. He's pretty sharp in the in the heritage classic not that he had to do a lot but yep like yeah we'll see I th- yeah the goal t- i think the goaltending matchup and uh i think you got to go back to him too yeah <laughs> up on we'll the see i just that's what you'd like think. That's you think that's the logical <laughs> yeah that's the logical thing but uh if we know one thing about nhl coaches sometimes they leave logic on the sidewalk when it comes to uh goaltending uh all right well that's for uh the episode we'll re- we will record tomorrow uh, the Blues and Avalanche now. St. Louis is a big fav- uh, big underdog at plus 195. Colorado hosting as a minus 238 favorite right now in the over-under 6.5. This one is a pass. I promise I have a bet in the last game, but uh, another pass for me, Nick. Yeah, if anything here, I would just be looking at some of the Avs' top stars to come through. I think it's a good spot for them. I still don't think the Blues will defend real well. Um, and obviously we'll throw in there that Kale McCarr seems likely to miss this game. Bowen Byram's also going to miss this game. He's had kind of a surprisingly bad start to the year, but I still rate him pretty high. So that's a little concerning. Um, I could see McKinnon coming through with a really big, big game here. He's been a little quieter the last few and don't trust anyone on the Blues defending him and just seems like kind of an inspired spot for the Avs. So I think this should be like a higher scoring game where maybe he can stand out. And then the other one is, Keep your eye out on Devin Taves props if, if McCarr sits. There was a few times last year where they just didn't move the numbers enough uh, when he was out, and he's going to run the top power play. So pretty easy take there. But yeah, that's, I don't really have anything firm on this game either. 
Yeah, I, I mean, regardless of the you, I I already tracked Av's uh, puck line, and Nick texted me and said, "Hey, hold off about the injuries here. Like, you know, we we this line, you might get a better number." And you know, I, I kind of said, "I don't care." The, the the Avs have been shut out in back to back games. They're just so much better than this Blues team. Blues suck. Um, I think you're getting just a real good effort from the Avalanche here, and and the the Oilers didn't come through on it, but I still believe in the stars out effect and that it can uh, make you play better as a team. So I'm gonna be looking at Avs puck line. I've already taken it. And sometimes if you look closely, if you comb through, you can find some rogue uh, good three way lines that that are like not consistent with other books. So I'll probably take Avs three way as well if I can find a good enough rogue number. Yeah, and that's where uh, I kind of agree like that I like targeting the Avs stars here because I'm, I'm with you. Like it, it feels like a good spot for them to come through. It's the Blues. I think it'll be high scoring. So I just feel like if they find a way to take this one, that'll be the way they do it. Um, yeah. And, uh, Jordan Bennington alternate saves like 40, 45 plus kind of night. Uh, it's definitely that. an interesting look here. And uh, we wrap up the show with the Coyotes and Ducks. Our Super Bowl, uh, the Ducks at as a home dog plus one hundred five, Arizona just pummeled Chicago, eight uh, one, Michael Carcone, uh, the hat trick. We all saw that one coming. Uh, the Coyotes minus one twenty five in the spot. The over under six and a half. I really like Arizona here. The Ducks are coming home after an absolutely brilliant road trip. I think you could probably make the case that that was the most successful stretch of hockey results wise like pound for pound relative to expectations of any team in the league this year what the ducks just did uh boston pittsburgh um philly who was you know hot at the time too now they travel cross country you know it's gonna be a little inflated because of how they just look but i mean the way that they won those games not all that sustainable like we like the ducks team as a uh, i do especially as like a punch-up team because they have talent they can get the goaltending uh, and the uh, depth isn't uh, as bad as it was last year, but they won against Philly against a backup goalie who was not good. Sharp, wasn't sharp early. Then they uh, came back in the last two minutes down a pair of goals against the uh, Bruins and then won an overtime. The game against Pittsburgh was just outlandish the way that one ended. I will say that they probably, you know, they, they didn't get a great whistle against the Penguins. Uh, I mean, as they well. got, Dummy though. Yeah, I, yeah, they did. I, but I, like, it's yeah, like you can't. Yeah, I so actually like, think that was probably the worst one, right? That was, I think, I think the, the biggest expected goal game. of the season. The expected goal, like most lopsided, uh, in terms of the Penguins, uh, in favor of the Penguins. So the the point is that they just weren't sustainable ways to win. Uh, so yeah, I and now like they're it. running into a Coyotes team that is legitimately playing well, and I think uh, dangerous here on the road, Nick. Yeah, I think you summarized it really well. That's like this is just this is how I had phrased it in my article on this game. I if I had bet on what this price would be three weeks ago, I would have thought it was Coyotes minus one forty five, maybe even minus one fifty if the season went the way I thought it could for the Coyotes. So like we definitely have to give some credit to the Ducks overachieving the way that they have. But I still just think the pure talent of these rosters, it's giving so much credit to have this open where it did. So I think anything better than minus 130 is, is a really good bet to get Arizona. And if you're someone who kind of puts onus on like the spot and that sort of thing, I know some people don't like, like they had a huge Eastern road swing first game back at home. Some people consider that kind of a sleepy spot. I, I'm just kind of looking at it thinking just basically what I thought about this Arizona roster compared to this Ducks roster right now, right? Like some of these guys, I don't think are going to be this strong all season long. Who knows, too, is this a game where Leo Carlson sits again? Like, yep. according to their schedule, it's almost soon. It's funny. He looks so good, and he's in such a good role compared to the other rookies. Like, we kind of talked about this. I would be happy to get him at the current Calder numbers if I didn't think, like, didn't know he was going to sit one out of four games or whatever, like, it's going to add up to the rest of the way. So, yep. yeah, that's interesting. But, I, I like, I've... I, Full respect to what the Ducks have done, but it does seem to be like a good sell spot where they're getting a lot of credit now from odds makers for how good that road swing was. Anything for you, Tim? 
Yeah, I'm, 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 what am I going to sit here and say that I'm on the Ducks after all that? Yeah, of course I'm on the Yotes. Um, we, guys, we did it. The Yotes are now favorites in back-to-back games. <laughs> our, Yo- our Yotes love, our, our Yotes campaign is coming through. And, and now I'm sitting here and I'm like, I got to take this team as a favorite? What am I doing? So, I mean, it's, it's funny to see the scariest part of the bet um, for me is that the Coyotes just put up a touchdown and two-point conversion against Chicago. And um, it's just, it's always tough to come back down to earth and start a game zero, zero after you do something like that. But um, I do put a lot of, uh, put a lot into the spot here. So yeah, the, the Yotes, even though I, I can't believe we're seeing collapse, a minus versus, next to their name. I think that four, one collapse versus the Kings caught their attention a little bit there. Yeah. yeah. Last yeah. night they weren't letting up versus the Hawks. Yeah. And then before we wrap to stick with the Yotes. So I was looking, there is team to record most points in November. And I, I have, there's a few I like. First off, because I don't think the Panthers playing that good. They're one of the favorites because of their schedule. Colorado, if they have no McCarr, could, I think it's probably a little too high. I don't think Tampa are playing too great. Vegas, I think right now, are winning every single 50-50 game. It's crazy. Like Everyone has been like Montreal last night. The Oilers are the first team that I think could do it. I think the Devils could do it. And then way down at 65-1 to 1 are our Coyotes which I actually think is reasonable if we want to be really, if they're going to get it going, this is the month. Their schedule is so good. Like they're going to have a ton of games where they're favored. So I think that's actually a fun sprinkle. It could look idiotic, but I just like, I think it's a fun market to go and have like get on a bit this month because I don't really think the teams they have favored at the top are actually that likely to dominate in the short term. Like I think the Devils, Oilers, and Coyotes are all, decent plays at the numbers that are out there um it's a, it's a wonderful bet and, and then really december better. 1st december 1st we all retire the, yeah right up my alley. Is over. well yeah because we're going to be round robining it with with you know, all sorts of other stuff uh It'll be and a I, huge month for the yotes because if they don't come through with like a pretty strong record we're just going to be in shambles with all these tickets probably but, <laughs> like, they're at anaheim canadians jets Kraken, Blues, Preds, Stars, Blue Jackets, Jets. Like their hardest game is what? The Kings, Knights, Lightning. Like they have some tough games, but it's all those teams that I think are a little kind of free running right now and I want to pick on. So Nick, stop that know. schedule. I'm, I'm salivating. <laughs> the early part of it. I know I'll be in there cheering hard too, just screaming about my ticket at the players. So Oh my you know. gosh. What a look. Well, <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, get on that with us. That'll be a fun one to ride with all you people. Especially hope. Hopefully, you also have Andre Torigny tickets by now. Uh, he's eighteen to one. I'm seeing Rod Brendamore is still the uh, clear favorite to win the Jack Adams Award, and that tells you everything you yeah, need that, to know about how quickly they update these markets. Yeah, that just um, doesn't make sense. Because like, no, Rod sense. is one. Like, he's a great coach, but we know they're probably not going to want to. Like that's just a roster that needs to be like a President's Trophy winner for him to win the award. Yeah. Right. Like that's. And, and they've not been great. Like, it's just weird that he's, uh, he has a I do think, I think we'll probably talk about that because there's a fun game on Thursday, but I, it seems like the Canes are about to yeah. probably start rolling, right? I would agree. Um, all right. So hopefully you get on the Yotes with us, uh, both now and for the whole month of November. Uh, and we will see you again on Thursday morning as we preview a 12 game slate. Finally, the NHL gives us a decent one uh, for this week. But until then, Nick Martin, uh, Tim Kalinowski, best of luck with all your bets. 